Umar Musa era joa. Jerusalem le swear. Jerusalem le swear. President Umaru Yaradua took power in Africa's most populous nation, Nigeria, in May 2007. A devout Muslim from Katsina State in the country's north, Yaradua was an unlikely candidate for president, a virtual unknown among ordinary people perceived as too quiet and lacking charisma. But his selection as the presidential candidate for Nigeria's ruling party, the People's Democratic Party, virtually guaranteed him the job. What brought him public notoriety was the president's decision to declare his wealth upon assuming office, a rare act for politicians in Nigeria. The president was found, in comparison to men of his rank, to be poor. One of his former deputies spoke of the president's virtues in 2008. He's not corrupt. He's not greedy. Of course, that is, no matter what, you, you will not find him wanting in terms of malpractices. Secondly, he's hardworking. When he set up a goal, no matter how long it takes, he will achieve that goal. But his performance in what is arguably the toughest job in Africa fell woefully short. The president was plagued by serious bouts of illness that left him only able to work for a few hours a day. The biggest crisis in Yaradua's tenure hit in November 2009 when he collapsed and was evacuated out of Nigeria to Saudi Arabia. It was a medical vacation that lasted three long months, leaving Nigeria leaderless, a dangerous scenario for a nation which at the time had only enjoyed 10 years of uninterrupted democratic rule. There were fears the military could try and take over. His absence also unleashed an unprecedented political and constitutional logjam over what to do. Many deemed the president's act of leaving the country without handing power to his vice president as unconstitutional and called for his impeachment. Hundreds of thousands of protesters took to the streets in towns and cities across Nigeria calling for him to step down. The president had touched on his persistent ill health an acknowledgement of what a worry it was for people. I am as ordinary as any other Nigerian or as any other person. I can fall sick. And you can get well. I can get well. I can die. I can die tomorrow. I can die next month. I may live to be 90. I don't know. His three-month-long hiatus on sick leave in Saudi Arabia led the president to be replaced by Vice President Goodluck Jonathan as acting president. President Yaradua did eventually return home, but still very sick, his persistent health problems having extinguished his ambition and much of his ability. So what, if any lasting legacy, will President Yaradua have? The late president will probably go down most famously for helping to bring about peace in the country's volatile or rich Niger Delta region. During his tenure, thousands of fighters who say they are fighting for a greater share of Nigeria's oil riches for the poor brought havoc to the region by sabotaging oil pipelines and installations. President Yaradua offered amnesty to fighters, promising jobs, education and training, and in so doing, helping to stem the violence and criminality in the Delta. If long-term peace is brought to the Delta, President Yaradua's name will go down in history as being part of it. Ivondege Al Jazeera, Abuja, Nigeria.